important relaxation between suctioning, uh, some clear cut idea. Depth, how much? Sir, as per NRP guidelines, uh, in nasal suction, 2 centimeter, in oral suction, 5 centimeter, endotracheal, you have to measure the length of that end, uh, ET tube till the tip or uh, 0.5 centimeter more, not beyond that. It has to take uh, less than 15 seconds to do the suction. Thank you. You, you can add some points on section. Yes, sir. When we are removing, it should be in a rotatory manner. We like have to remove this. it. Not in the straight manner. Whenever you suction it, it should be in a rotating manner. Within a 15 seconds, you need to remove it out. Again, two members, as the doctor told, there should be a two members when you uh, suction to the ET tubes. Because one member or the staff or the doctor cannot do suctioning. Because the sterile procedure, suctions will be connected. And after that, we need to... And, uh, hand care and doctor also have a hand care so the doctor will help in the removing the ET tube suction immediately and ventilate properly. So this because two the one member members, technique, it will be yeah, it's very important not only for suction. Whenever you have a busy NICU, when your staffing numbers are exceeded, you always see rise in infection. Because even to do procedures in an aseptic way, uh, you need two people. When you put in a cannula, I mean, the one nurse doing the procedure, you may see them reaching out and touching the surroundings to take something if you have two people. But when you're really busy, when two people are stuck with their own babies, it's difficult to do that in practical terms. We have care bundles and we always say oh, second person is checking if everything is done properly, but it doesn't always work. So not only for suction, and that's why uh, it's good if your unit allows you to have a float person. So in addition to uh, having someone without an allotment, allotment, that will only help those doing procedures, doing medications. Uh, the staff uh, less than three months and trained only for three months we take them as helpers we label them as helpers so they help in these all procedures only and um, we have a designated staff like admission team is there then a second is the supervisor team so uh, only six persons are designated for doing the section that i have seen that they have done 15 16 times in front of me they are designated to do the section and the helper people they help in uh, this under style condition so, Nasal care, um, the two inches. Uh, nasal care also two inches. You have to see whether blockage. You said centimeter. Uh, you said centimeter. You said centimeters. Uh, As per NRP guide. Yeah, yeah. You said inch. I'm saying it's different. Okay, sir. Uh, yeah. Two centimeters, and uh, if you have to see the nasal blocks, anything. So, as per doctors, we can put nasal sprays in between, and we can do suctioning. So, in your experience, what causes the nose block? Nose block, any secretions. Um. So remember that the nose, uh, I mean, obviously has to be patent for your NAV to work. We will discuss that. And most often the nose block is a reaction to your suction. So when you are suctioning, if you touch the septum, if you touch the side of the turbinates, you are going to inflame. And if you're talking of 24, 25 weeks, the passage is very small. So unfortunately, once you start getting obstruction, it becomes very difficult. I mean, we have some very small babies. I think we had the discussion on the group and uh, obviously we have had babies, very small babies where the nose started bleeding and we had to use Tobradex, which is uh, off license use for a few days to reduce inflammation and to open up the obstruction and even over driven two or three drops. It's not ideal to use those. So don't reach that situation. And what uh, Dr. Avneet said about experienced people for the tiniest babies, if you see uh, the Iowa experience, they give the sickest and smallest babies to the most experienced nurses. And this is because once you do a damage, you have to work hard to retrieve it. So Dr. Palanivel's case, I mean, in terms of, uh, you said you did the dope. I mean, do you want to elaborate a little bit on what? Yes, sir. No, no, sir. My resident case. So. What would you say about the right side? Did they place on that? Mm -hmm. assume the right side. Yes, sir, the ETT was a little bit low, low in questions. No, no, in this is after the surfactant was given. Yes, sir, it yes, could sir. have gone in as well. Yes. 
So ET tube was low. I mean, what would you advise them before you give surfactant? You make sure the position is good. Yes, it is. Uh, the calorimetry you don't have, unfortunately. I mean, uh, if you see uh, Dr. Peter Davis study in Australia, 20% of the surfactant didn't go into the airway in the right place. Either it went into the right bronchus or it went into the esophagus. So, and that's why even with the LISA, now you have the option to do calorimetry with the three size adapter. You can connect a catheter, LISA catheter. So you have options, but uh, I don't know, we'll discuss with Dr. Karthik and maybe the manufacturers could help us get the calorie. It's not that expensive, but uh, disposable items, so it will add to the cost. So I think uh, we have uh, five more minutes. Both of you kept time very well. That's well appreciated as well. So can you describe again? So one is uh, your thought is correct about the surfactant being in the uh, wrongs, I mean, the deeper in the right side. The other advert disadvantage of that is the risk of air leak when you start increasing the pressure. So you have non-homogeneous lung disease and you cannot selectively intubate the left bronchus. Right bronchus is more easy. Um, so we will discuss high frequency as well. Where there is a risk of air leak that is high, uh, high frequency is an option as well to open up. So you don't have high frequency or you have? Yes, sir, we have, sir, but we didn't use it. <laughs> okay. So that's a, if you are stuck with it, I mean, before you give surfactant, you could, because it's asymmetric. Yes, Giving surfactant also has the same problem. When you give surfactant now to this baby, it will go to both lungs. Yes. And the pressure requirements you are going to give will over distend the right lung. It will open up the left lung. So you have to balance whether you really need it and you did well in not giving the second dose yes. because that's a challenging situation. But high frequency is an option and you can nurse which side up. Sir. Which side would you put up in this baby? Nursing one side up. Disease side. Yeah. So the left is closed, you would yes. like in a collapse. Yes. So you're going to uh, nurse the left side up for some yes. time. Yes. Did you do that? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. You're looking at him. Huh? <laughs> okay. That's fine. Any comments on the case? Or Sir, uh, some uh, ventilators, they have uh, suction buttons. Uh, can we use it in neonates? It's actually covered in this lecture on oxygen. But, uh, let's say suction, it, uh, you can adjust it in the ventilator to say how, what percentage it will increase. Nowadays, it's 10%. You can even make it 5%. If you tell the uh, clinical application specialist who comes to your unit or your biomedical team, uh, the suction pressure, I mean, suction hold can change to 5% even according to what you say. Yeah. No, see that I had a different comment altogether. Most of the times, if you're going to look after smaller and smaller babies, we don't want to let go of the lung recruitment. So it's not a great idea to disconnect and do suctioning. So always inline suctioning with two people is the mode to go further. So even the little time you don't have the lung recruited, it can actually lead to a lot of lung injury. Please keep that in mind. How many of you have inline suction? Cost is a factor. So, Sona, just describe how you do inline suction. I mean, just can you state this? Sir, sir, I'll ask, sir. sir, I have a question on inline. I'll complete the question also. That will be yeah, helpful. Take, yes, sir. The inline we tried to purchase, we had actually, but our staff are not comfortable with it. They just did not want to use it because it was not sucking well. It was the answer given by them, sir. So we had to stop buying it. Actually, we were giving it to them. They were not ready to use it. They were preferring the open method. But we had, but the results we had was good while we used it. it we about had, education, I think. What they expect by well, so it's subjective. Is it? I mean. Sir, the pressures according to how well we adjust, sir. Because if the suction bottles also, if it's not corrected properly, the seal is not proper, maybe the pressures will reduce and there maybe they're not getting the suction properly from the inline. With the pressures, the bottle, the tubings, they need to maybe see the things. But it is good when you use the inline suctioning. And there will be a marking in that. According to that marking, they can go inside. Inline, I don't know. You don't have? Okay, that's fine. You want to add anything to inline suction as well? No, it's multiple uses. You have a limit on how long you can keep, no? It's until seven days. The calorimeter, we will find out why it's not available. Whether anyone, anyone uses the calorimeter to confirm ET tube position? It's part of NRP, isn't it? Uh, yellow for yes. Okay. 
So that's fine. Then we'll move to the next topic. Thank you. Yeah. Online. Yeah. Distilled water is suction. No, no. Saline and distilled water. It's uh, no, distilled water is irritant to the airway. You should have at least fifty percent leak. The size of the catheter used for suction. I mean, it shouldn't be tight. It shouldn't block the airway more than fifty percent of the size. Of course, in the smallest ET tube, it will be uh, more difficult. Uh, any other questions? No, sir. One more. Yeah. Which one? Which, when to select volume guarantee mode to baby? I think we discussed it towards the end, but tomorrow Dr. Karthik will be referring to the disease-specific okay. ventilation. Uh, we will come to that at that stage. What well. should be the initial PIP when we start ventilation and what should be the maximum value? This again will be covered in that topic. So we'll go to non-invasive. And one more. No?